programming language. Um, the, from, a, from like a C programmer's perspective, Python is just a C API, right? Anything you can do in Python, any Python code you can write, you can write an equivalent C module, you can write C code that does exactly the same thing using the Python API. Um, I, I can tell you that that's not a fun experience. Using the Python API directly is, is, is tedious and error prone and kind of difficult. A lot of uh, really popular Python packages use the C API directly. Like I think that NumPy uses it directly. I think the TensorFlow uses it directly. But a lot of other pi popular uh, Python APIs uh, use Cython. Um, I think like Pandas is probably the best example. Um, it, there's, it's super fast uh, and it, uh, it, 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 it gets that by using Cython. Um, so it's a, when I say that Cython is a language, what that means is that it's, it's actually just Python. Plus, plus extra syntax that you can opt into, right? So you, um, if you have, if like you profile your code, you know, say like, okay, I do this one thing once, I do this other thing 10 times, but I do this other thing like a billion times and it's not fast enough. You can just write that one thing uh, in C, using the C API, or you can use Cython, or there are some other things that will also create uh, like a, a C module for you, but um, if you're a Python programmer, using the you know Python syntax uh, is a very natural uh, jumping off point. So like it's super good at speeding up your Python code. And if you, but the, the other one of the other magic powers of Python is that if you have some like C or C plus plus library that you want to be able to use from your Python code, it's perfect for that. There's like this extra syntax you can use to import. Uh, like C header libraries or C++ header library uh, and, and just use that code directly from Python. Um, a little bit less common is to, if you're like writing C code and C++ code and you wish you were writing Python code, you're like, oh, I already solved this in Python. It is actually possible to call Python code from C or C++ using Python. Um, and I wouldn't advocate this, but like if you, for some reason, don't want to publish your code because like, you know, Python is uh, it's an interpreted language, right? So if you, if you have some secrets in your code and you don't want to distribute that to the world, you're like, well, I have to write C because I want to be able to compile it so that people can't read my source code. Well, you, you could actually just pi uh, compile your, your uh, Python code into C and then distribute that as a binary that you can, you know, uh, instead, of the, instead of your Python code. Um, and of course, it's good for live demos. Uh, well, not really, but it's a it's a segue to uh, what I'm going to do next, which is just enough to hopefully wet your whistle so that you look into this yourself. So I thought it's too big to really like cover completely in ten minutes, but uh, just to give you an idea of how much power there is available to you at your fingertips, I'll just give you like a, a really quick example. Um, so to do that. I'm going to use uh, IPython, which is a like a drop-in replacement for your regular Python interpreter. Um, you can use Jupyter Notebooks. It kind of came out of the IPython project. But the reason that I'm going to use that is uh, you can load extensions in IPython to do other things. In this case, I'm going to load the, the Cython extension. Like I have a setup file that, um, like a, like a, a dot file that's all it's always loaded for me. But like if you were to follow along at home, you'd have to run this step first. Um, but to pick on, to, well, I need to like come up with something to, to profile it, to compare you know, pure Python code against this like Cython stuff. So I'm gonna write a horrible version of the Fibonacci number sequence. Um, that, you know, it's, it's, it'll be very succinct, but it is, it is gonna have like an exponential runtime that they're, they're gonna abuse here. So uh, Eric's version was much better if you actually want it to be, you know, fast in Python. But let's say we, um, oh, is this big enough? Should I make that, yeah, I can make that a little bigger. How's that? Good, okay. That's All good. Right. So, so to get like the nth Fibonacci number, we want to return one uh, if, uh, if n is less than two, right? Uh, otherwise, we're gonna, um, otherwise we're gonna return fib of n minus one plus uh, fib of n minus two. 
uh, just to make sure that that's right. Just kind of look at some of the yeah, yeah one one two three five. That looks right. Um, but it's just you, know, you just add the uh, the previous two elements of the sequence to get the next element, right? Um, the, another really cool thing about IPython is there's this built-in timing. If anybody says, "Oh, well, Python's too slow," you should figure out like, what, what, have you profiled it? And IPython makes that really really easy. You can use the time it module. And right, let's say um, let's let's like run the run fib of oh, 21. Um, this implementation of the Fibonacci sequence is only good for really small numbers. So you can see Fibonacci 21 takes 2.63 milliseconds on average, plus or minus 24 or 29.4 microseconds. So what time it does is it just like it just runs that code that you give it a bunch of times, and depending on how long it takes, it's gonna decide how many times to run it to give you uh, some statistics about you know, what, the ad, what the mean time was and the standard deviation of the runs, which is really cool. Um, but so my claim is that we can do a lot better. So in, in, in IPython, and this also works in a Jupyter notebook, uh, you, can, you can just make a Cython cell and we can say, we can, we can do the same thing. Um, Let's give it a different name. Um, but the implementation is going to be exactly the same. In fact, I'll just like copy and paste that. Um, we are going to have to change the, the names for the recursive elements. So we actually call our Cython version. And by magic, this has actually created a gigantic C file and compiled it and made a shared object and loaded it back into the IPython interpreter. Um, I'm doing this because like those details, while important, if you're actually gonna use Cython for development, like it's not, it's, not the, uh, it's not the interesting part of Cython. So now, well, I guess maybe we should like check to make sure this actually produces the same results. Looks good. Now we time. Um, so let's time, uh, time it. Uh, Scifib. Oh, let's actually do 21, since that's what I did above. If you take control C, you can see it's like deep in this like recursive uh, function and timing it. Okay, so we got 609 microseconds. Just for comparison, um, let's like look at, I'm just trying to type the Python version of that. Um, that's messed up. Let's do fib of 21. Oops, see if not a thing. 2.64 milliseconds versus, pause for emphasis, 614 microseconds. So that's like a, uh, a four times speed up with no code changes, no code changes. Now I mentioned that there's like, you can, you can do better than this because there's additional syntax. So from, the, from a C point of view, uh, all Python types, they're all the same type. They're pi object star. Uh, so you can, you can short circuit that by telling it what the type is. Uh, so let's do that in, uh, in the argument list here. Let's say, well, like, well, we know that n is always going to be an integer. It's never going to be a string. It's never going to be anything else. It's just, it's always going to be an integer. So we redefine that. Um, and now we can retime this. And we'll see that it gets a little bit better. But it doesn't get a ton better. You know, like, you know, that's, I mean, it's not insignificant. This is the kind of win that you would, you know, maybe you get a raise for at your job. But like, it, we can do a lot better than this. But the, the, the only reason this is faster is because it's converting this computation and this computation into just regular integer mathematics, right? It's just saying, oh, n is an int, minus one, I, that, that's, that's just gonna produce the C code that it's exactly that. Before, before we put this int here, it was actually drilling into the pi object star, asking what type it was, and then like, Oh, it's your integer type. Okay, well then I'm going to unbox you and find the underlying actual value, and then I'm going to do that subtraction. So all of that stuff is short circuited. That's why we get the speed up. The the uh, the piece, the resistance, if you will, is 
to change the return value, the, the, the return type. Because right now, the overwhelming majority of the time is spent in the Python function call semantics, right? That that function call overhead is dominating this uh, computation. If we could use the, the C calling uh, uh, semantics, we're gonna like eliminate almost all the time. So I really wanna type this, but this actually isn't gonna work. Like you've, you've, you've exhausted the limits of the def keyword here. So you have to, you have to drill into some of the other fanciness that's, that Cython provides you. So I'm gonna put like a, a CP in front of this def. And internally what this is doing is it's creating a C version of this uh, function and a Python version of the function so that we can call it from the Python, you know, Python user space. Uh, but but once, it, once it's in there, all the recursive calls are actually gonna be to a C function. So all the function call overhead uh, that's introduced by uh, Python calling semantics are gonna go away. Now in time. It's gonna take a while, a little bit longer because notice that it's like, oh, well that took so, so much less time. I'm actually gonna do 10,000 loops just to give you a better standard deviation. We're down to like 31 microseconds. We started with 2.64 milliseconds, right? So if we uh, figure out what, they, what, the, what the speed up is, we get a pretty impressive number, 83 times faster. Not 83% faster, 83 times faster. So uh, most of your problems aren't gonna be this like horrible Fibonacci uh, implementation that, yeah, exponential runtime. And this is not how I would speed up this problem. You need to fix the implementation, right? You need to use Eric's implementation to get a linear runtime for this function. Uh, so algorithms are always the right answer, but when, when you're trying to like squeak out that extra goodness you can you can drop down to the C level if you need to in Python, right? It's it, the, the door the door is open and it's you know it's kind of nice on the other side. Uh, I guess I guess that's it. Uh, any questions? Uh, I have a question. Um, what, in your opinion, is the difference between using Cython and uh, maybe something like PyPy that's a just-in-time compiler? Oh, yeah, sure. PyPy is great. Uh, and PyPy will do uh, pretty similar goodness here. Uh, PyPy, uh, like, like, like all JITs, are going to be able to look at the types involved at runtime. And it's going to check, like, are the types changing? No? OK, well, I'm just going to make a, I'm just gonna make a C version of this. It's going to be really fast. So like PyPy would probably do just as good as Cython here. Where Cython, for me personally, in my work, where it shines is the ability to interop with native code. Like you have some, you know, some C library or C++ library. Uh, in particular, the C++ library. Like Python, uh, the built-in C types, I don't know if anybody's used that module. Um, C types gets you pretty, uh, pretty quick and easy access to uh, to any any C uh, shared library, but once you get into C plus plus, the name mangling, it's like ah, uh, forget about it, right? Um, so Cython solves that problem for you. Um, but that said, it does make Python code faster, and like you know, if you use pandas, you're already using Cython. Um, but for your, like if you're just trying to make yourself faster, and you can convince your users to use PyPy, yeah, you're probably going to get a similar speed up. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Yeah, you bet. Um, when you you're converting this CPDEF um, version, is are you, is the C version using C ints yeah. or is it using the uh, ints of Python? No, no, no. It's using a C integer. In fact, we can look at the uh, one of the cool things about Cython on the list I put out there, it's also a command line tool to like evaluate like your Cython code. There's a, if you pass, uh, like if you pip install Cython, you gain access to a bunch of, uh, a couple of executables, there's like Cython and Cython eyes and maybe some others. Um, if you say like, you know, Cython and some, and you give it a, a, like a Python file or maybe like a PYX file, which is the standard uh, uh, file extension for, for Cython, and you pass a dash A to it, it's actually gonna generate an HTML file for you. 
uh, that is just your code. But, but all of the lines of the code are highlighted in various levels of yellow. So the brightest yellow indicates that you're going to have, th th that, that corresponds to the more C code and more, well, actually, really, it's more interaction with the Python interpreter. So if you click on that, you can see all the C code that is generated to do all the stuff that you're asking for it to do. And when you introduce types, and you eliminate those interactions with the with the Python interpreter, like all that, you know, drilling into that PyObject star stuff that I mentioned, the, the shade of the yellow gets lighter and lighter until it becomes just white. And then you know that you're actually writing C code with no Python overhead. Okay. But the reason I'm asking it is if you if you if you run Python with a big number in in, no, I'm, and fib was a big number in Python. Yeah, where you don't have any. Yeah, you're going to get integer. Yeah, and yeah, uh, you're going to integer overflow. Absolutely. You you get in, integer overflows. Yeah. Yep. So if you, it, but it's opt in, right? If you put int in front of it, you're going to get, uh, you're going to get a 32 bit integer on most computers. If you say long long, you're going to get a 64 bit integer. Uh, so yeah, you're 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 uh, not only opting into the the benefits of C, but also the you know the, the dangers of C. So the, so the types are C types, not Python types. You uh, so yes and no. Um, the, the short answer is yes. They are all ultimately C types uh, or C plus plus types. Um, the C plus plus conversation is more complicated. But um, the when I say sort of, what I mean by that is a lot of uh, popular Python. Uh, projects have Cython bindings, which means that they they've written a PXD file, which is a kind of equivalent to like a, a, a header file, like a .h file, um, in which they've uh, exposed their their native module, um, but in the format that, that that Cython understands. So, like if you using NumPy or something, you can you can like do a C import of NumPy and access uh, data structures uh, in NumPy. But they're C equivalent. So yes, they are C types, but they're in the, the NumPy module mm -hmm. or package rather. Okay. Any any last thoughts? Do uh, Python uh, Python three hints type hints do they work in um, Cython? With that decorator, so uh, Cython is uh, Python three compatible, uh, and in fact, even so, Cython has a, a flag for the language level. Um, so you can use Python two or, or Python three semantics, uh, and if you choose Python three, which will be the default in, in the next version of Cython, uh, you're going to get Python three semantics by default. However, I, as far as I know, uh, I know there's like a long-standing like GitHub issue on Cython about this. If you were to use uh, Python 3 uh, syntax for declaring the types of arguments, I don't, it, 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 last I checked, Cython does not support that. You need to use like the, the you know, type followed by the variable name rather than variable name colon the type. So you can do both, but it's, it's, it's a little bit ugly in that, in that area, yeah. Oh, wow. But you can do, you know, all the, you know, the Python, Python three goodness. You can use async await. You can use all the things. Oh wow! So, question for you. <clears throat> yeah. So, you, so are we, we we have a lag between what Python version you use and what is supported by Cython? Yes. Um, but the the Cython uh, core devs keep up pretty well. So like the while while Python like Python three ten is in alpha right now, or maybe it's in beta. I don't know. Um, there is a corresponding there's corresponding work in Cython that uh, are taking those uh, those into account. The so one thing I should mention that if you do use Cython, um, the the version of your Python interpreter very much matters. So uh, the the minor version is compatible. The uh, sorry, the you have in order to get a compatible uh, uh, you know DLLs or shared objects depending on your operating system, um, you need to be within the same minor version. So like if you if you compile uh, a Cython module for Python 3.6, that's good for 3.6x, not 3.7, not 3.5, 3.6.
not anything but 3.6. Um, in each minor version of Python that comes out, the, uh, uh, the C API changes, the ABI changes in particular. Uh, so yeah, you're stuck. If you, if you want to like put, if you want to publish your package up to PyPy, you better be uh, using like the mini Linux container to build your package for you know, all of the Python versions that your users might want to use.